in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use the Redwood Hierarchy Viewer and the pattern for it. And we're going to use this employee table as the base for it. We have a list of employees. Each employee has a manager. The manager is just another employee, so this is based on the ID. So you can see, for example, that Sean is managing Chris because he's the manager. So let's say we want to show Chris, which is employee number two, in a hierarchy viewer. How do we go about doing it? So we have a page, this is an empty page, um, but our application is using the Redwood Starter template, so we can choose, for example, to use the general overview page template here. And this gives us a little bit nicer view. We can set the title to be Employees 3. Okay, something like that. And then one of the components that is available here is called Hierarchy Viewer Pattern you can add to the page. And um, so we're going to take this and drag it into the main area over here. Now, if you need to know how to work with the hierarchy viewer, you go over to the component exchange, you search for hierarchy viewer pattern, and you get all the information and step by step on how to customize it. Okay. And starting with configuring the card templates. All right. So let's go back to the page. And as you can see, when we drop the pattern on the page, we got a component, a hierarchy viewer, and inside it, there's a template. Now, note that there's a place here that says insert template name. So you'll see it in several places where you need to update stuff. So our template is going to be called AMP um, because we're showing an employee. Um, note that in a hierarchy viewer, you can actually have multiple templates if you're showing different types of objects. I'm going to show employees throughout the tree, so I just need one template. Next thing you're going to customize is the hierarchy card. Okay, so this is going to be what you're actually going to show here. Um, now you're going to fetch an array and you can use the current data dot and then the property that you want to show in each one of the areas. So the title of our card would be the name of the employee. Subtitle can be, for example, the job of the employee. And the avatar would be the picture of the employee like that. Okay, and you can add more stuff here. The next thing you'll notice is that in our application, we also got a bunch of variables created when we brought in the pattern. And those variables are actually what's driving the tree. And the most important one is called current item ID. That's the ID of the current object you want to show. In our case, the ID of the employee, we said we want to start with employee number two. Note that this is a parameter that you can pass on the URL, so you can get um, this as a parameter and start from different employees, for example. All right, the next thing you want to do is say, hey, our current item data, where is it coming from? This is a service data provider, so it needs to be mapped to a service that returns multiple records. So in our case, the employees, you're going to select the fields you want to show. So for us, it would be salary, picture, name, who's the manager, what's the job, and what's the ID, for example. So we're creating a type and mapping our rest, our SDP to this REST service. Now we want to have a filter here. We don't want all the employees. We're showing the current employee. So we have a condition here that says that the ID of our employee okay, needs to be equal to the variable, right? So it's the current ID or current item ID variable. Okay. So that's our condition for populating this current item data. Okay. The other thing you have here is the current item template. And the template in our case is AMP. That's the template that we created in the hierarchy viewer. Then you can specify the parent data. So the parent data is basically the parent of the current object. So we need another variable here. We're going to call this, in our case, the manager ID variable. Okay, and this is going to be a number. And our parent item data is going to be mapped to the same employee REST service. So we can actually use the existing format or data type here. And the filter in this case is going to be that the ID of the employee that we're showing as the parent needs to be equal to our manager ID variable that we defined. 
All right, so this gets us the uh, parent data. Parent item template, again, it's employee. We only have one template. And we'll touch about the child view and selected child in a second. One more thing, how do we get the manager ID populated? When we start the page, so on a VB enter event, we're going to create an action chain that would fetch the manager ID. So it's very easy. We call a REST service. The REST service is getting us uh, the information about a specific employee. The employee that we're getting is the current item ID. That's the employee ID. Once we got the value from here, we can assign I can assign here and into the manager ID we're going to assign the response body and the manager ID that we got from the response the manager all right so now if we go back to our page and um, one thing to note the UI in the design time sometimes doesn't refresh properly so while you're working with this component it's very useful to actually run the page and see it and as you can see, Chris is our current employee, and this is the manager. Right. What we do want to see, though, is we want to see who works for Chris. So we want to see the children of Chris. Okay. So the hierarchy viewer, as we saw, has a variable called child's view. Okay. And it's actually starting from the hierarchy viewer itself you can have multiple child views. So you can show various details for uh, the current item. Again, we're going to just use one view, one child view. Uh, you give it an ID. In our case, we'll, we'll call this one the directs. So this is who works for them. That would be also our title. The template, same template, it's again employees. And the data is going to come in from a new variable. So we're going to create a variable called directs SDP, and this is a service data provider that gets us the directs. Okay. Um, now, one of the things that you can get for an SDP is the total size, and we're going to use this here in the count. Okay, so we're going to add total size, this is uppercase, and that's basically going to get us how many directs the person has. Now we need to map this direct SDP. So we created this uh, direct SDP. It needs to be mapped again to the same fetching of employees. Uh, we can use the existing data type because it gets us the right field that we need, right? like that. And the filter criterion here is we need to get all the employees whose manager is the current employee. So it needs to be equal to the current item ID. So this fetch fetches everyone whose the current employee is their manager. Right. So now if we go back and run this page, right, we can see Chris, the manager, and who works for Chris. Now, the next thing we might want to do is we, we might want to be able to click and drill down. Oh, one thing that we notice is we don't actually show how many directs are in there. That's because for the SDP, we need to define one more thing, and that is get us the total results. Okay, So we're going to set this one to true. This actually does a select count, so we get the results. And now if we run the... Right, we'll take care of this in a second. So now that we have this, we also want to enable drilling down on employees. So let's see how we drill down. So for this hierarchy view, you also have a, an event. So if we go back from here, this is the hierarchy view. We can see there's an event that was already created for us. So we can go into the event. This is still um, a JSON action chain. Um, and you need to go into the code version of it to edit two things. Okay, so this is getting two parameters, the focus template and the focus context. The context is the item that you clicked on. If you go to the code, you can see over here, we need to insert the object ID. 
So for us, this is the ID of the employee that was clicked. Okay, that's the context, and we need the ID. And again, the child view that we're showing is the direct in this case. And again, um, this is optional if you don't have too many um, child objects, you can probably leave it empty. All right, so we click here, we see an employee, and now we can click on another employee and we drill down. Now what we can see is that we haven't updated the manager, right? So we drill down into Sherry, we see who works for Sherry, but we still don't see the manager up here. So to fix this, there's one more thing we need to do, which is when we modify the value of the current variable, or the current item ID, okay? We want to have an event and fetch the manager. So let's add an event here. Um, there's an input here for the event. Go to the action chain. What we're going to do here is just like before, I'm going to call the REST service to get a specific employee. Okay. Um, this employee is going to be from the event, the new value. Okay. So that's the employee that we're fetching. Okay. And then we're going to assign um, into the manager ID, the value that we're getting from this response. Okay, so we just fetched a new employee. We need to know who is the manager and set it into manager ID. All right, let's run our page right now. Okay, and we have Sean, who's the manager of Chris. Chris is our current employee, and Chris has people working for him. If we click on Sherry, we can see Sherry has people working for it, and Chris is her manager. If we click on James, we can see Sherry is, her man is the manager. James doesn't have any direct. And then we can navigate up the tree again, like that. So going up and down, across the tree to get the information we need, just like that. So the one thing our demo was missing was in our hierarchy viewer, if we went over here, yeah, the count, we need to provide the direct SDP dot total size, like that. And now you can see we have the total over here. Okay, so we can see Chris has three employees. Click on Tiffany, she doesn't have employees. Click on Sherry, Sherry has two. All right, so we start with Chris, has three employees. Click on Sherry, she has two. James has zero. And we can again navigate up the chain and see who's managing and how many directs they have. So this was a quick demonstration of how to work with the tree.